This Photo Plus coverage was brought to you by Squarespace. What is going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong, and today I'll be giving you guys my first impressions on the upcoming Zhuyun Crane Weibo Lab and the Zhuyun Crane 3 Lab. Yeah. By the way, I am an ambassador for Zhuyun, so take that as you will, but I am gonna be honest in this video about my opinions on both of these gimbals. If you've been following me for a while now, you know I'm a huge fan of the Crane V2 and the Crane Plus. Both of these are lightweight gimbals. And I really think Zhuyun has that upper hand in that lightweight gimbal market. When it comes to the bigger ones like the Crane 2, they have DJI to compete with with their Ronin S. Now both of those, the Crane 2 and the Ronin S, are fantastic gimbals for bigger and heavier DSLR setups. But as for me, I fly with lighter combinations with the Sony mirrorless cameras. So something like the Crane 2 or the DJI Ronin S would be an absolute overkill for these types of cameras. When I'm flying a Sony camera with a lightweight prime lens, I'm going straight for the Crane V2. I'm going straight for the Crane Plus. So when Zhuyun announced the Weibo Lab, I was super excited for it just because it has a much smaller footprint than the Crane Plus. As you know, the Crane has a long vertical grip, but the Weibo looks to be a much smaller profile. As seen here in this video, you can mount the tripod right in the middle and hold it like a paintball gun. Does this make it more stable? I'm not too sure, but the footage does look pretty good. But if you're not comfortable with that style, you can mount it on the bottom to make an extended grip. Now here's something that would take me a while to get used to, which are gonna be the dedicated buttons um, that are gonna take you to each of the, uh, the gimbal modes, which is pan follow, lock, full follow focus, and go mode. So they adopted a lot of the things that they implemented from the smartphone Smooth 4 to this gimbal right here. No longer do you have to uh, tap on the mode button or the joystick to change modes. Now there are dedicated buttons for that. And speaking of adopting certain features from different models, a lot of the Crane 2 features got trickled down to the Weibo Lab. One obvious one is the OLED display, but another really interesting one is the follow focus control now. Now prior to this, the follow focus contraption, <laughs> however you want to call it, was only available on the Crane 2. And a lot of people who own the Crane Plus were like, will something like this be available for the Crane Plus? Unfortunately, the way that it was designed, they weren't able to adapt a follow focus to it. But now with the, with the Weibo, you can actually use the follow focus with the smaller camera setups. Another big thing you will notice um, with this gimbal is that the motor doesn't block the screen now, which is a lot of people's complaint when they were flying with a lot of the early generation gimbals. And I, I believe, was it ICANN was the one that did it first and then DJI came in after. Uh, regardless, Zhuyun was not the first one to adopt this, but they, are, but they are listening to the market and they're giving what people want, which is the motor not blocking the screen when you're flying the gimbal. Balancing is a lot different from what it used to be like before. With the earlier cranes, you have the knobs to adjust each of the axes. You do have knobs with this one, with the new Weibo Lab, but they're not in your uh, conventional places anymore. So I will show you guys how to balance the Weibo Lab when I get my hands on one. But again, aside from that, everything looks good, but I have nothing conclusive about this until I have a review unit in hand, which should be happening in the next couple of days. Crossing my fingers, it will pop up in the mailbox tomorrow. Moving on to the Crane 3 Lab, and oh my goodness, what kind of Frankenstein of a gimbal is this? Seriously though, this thing intimidates me, like sort of how the Crane 2 used to intimidate me with its thick handle. But I really learned to love the Crane 2 after a while. It's a super durable, super stable gimbal that a lot of filmmakers enjoy using. In fact, during the Photo Plus show, a lot of people gathered around the Crane 3 instead of the Weibo, particularly the filmmakers. What really enticed them was the follow focus control and the zoom control on the gimbal. That is right, with the Crane 2 you can only have one at a time, but with the Crane 3 you can have both at the same time. Holy cow. 
The design of the Crane 3 is different from the Weibo. While the way you hold it is very similar to each other, there's actually a secondary handle built into the gimbal to control the Crane 3. And much like the Crane 2 and the Crane Plus before, the Crane 3 and the Weibo will hold different payloads. The Weibo will support up to 6.6 pounds, about 3 kilograms, while the Crane 3 will hold a whopping 10 pound, 4.6 kilogram. Zhu Yun touted the Crane 3 will be able to support cinema cameras like the FS5, FS7, and the C200. In terms of battery life, the Weeble Lab will run you about 10 hours so long as you fall within the payload. For the Crane 3, B&H states that it will run about 18 hours, but the reps that I spoke with at Photo Plus said it's going to run about 7 hours. I'm going to get some clarification on this once I get the Crane 3 in my hands. As for the quick release plate, both gimbals now use the Manfrotto standard 501 plates. Aside from that, let's go over some of the similarities between the Crane 3 and the Weibo Lab. So again, both have OLED displays. They have dedicated buttons to go into different modes. Parameter cap uh, compatibility, as before with the Crane 2, um, with a Canon camera, you can actually control the aperture, the ISO, the shutter speed. Um, you can actually do that now with Panasonic and Nikon on both of these gimbals, but you cannot do it for Sony, and it's not, and it's nothing on Zhiyun. It's actually on Sony. Sony has not released anything for um, companies like DJI and Zhiyun to um, have it work with their gimbal, unfortunately. So if you're using a Sony camera, you would not be able to control um, the camera parameters on the gimbal itself. Um, I believe you can still hit the record button. I'm not too entirely sure on that, but once I get my review unit in, I'll let you guys know. Both gimbals have locks on all three axes that will allow you to securely pack the gimbals in bags without damaging them. Another thing that they have in common is that both, cam uh, both gimbals are capable of wireless transmission. So they can wirelessly transmit the image from the camera to your smartphone. Albeit there's a little bit of lag when they were demonstrating to me and I wish I got B-roll of this, but they say it'll be much improved once the gimbal comes out. And you can actually control gimbal movement with your smartphone via the gyro of your smartphone. So that was pretty cool. So you can actually place a pre-order on either of the gimbals right now on bnh.com. For the Weibo Lab, it's going to start at $599 base gimbal only. And if you're interested in the servo zoom and the focus controller for the Weibo Lab, you can actually pick it up along with a few other accessories in the creative package, which includes the monopod, a strap, and a phone mount. For $100 more, you'll be able to get it with a backpack as well. And of course, you can purchase the accessory separately for $230. The Crane 3 is also available for pre-order on B&H for $899, but just for the base gimbal. For the zoom and focus accessories, they will release more pricing info soon, but expect to pay up to $1,200 for the whole shebang. Before I get into details about my free workshop in LA, I just want to give my friends at Squarespace a quick shout out. I'm sure you've heard by now, Squarespace is the all-in-one solution for anybody looking to create a beautiful website without the pain and hassle of knowing any coding. Like me, I personally use Squarespace to house my portfolio work that I can quickly send off to potential clients where they can see all of my most recent wedding films and my best of the best photos. With Squarespace's easy to use interface, creating a portfolio is as simple as click and drag. Just ask Vivian, she did this for me actually. You can choose from their many clean templates to get started. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial and see how easy it is to set up your website. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Jason Vong to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to our regular programming. And if you're in LA, come to the Sony B Alpha event held at Sammy's camera on November 9th and November 10th, because again, I will be doing a gimbal walk. I'll be bringing all the cranes that I have for you guys to try out. That includes the Crane M, Crane Plus, Crane 2, and hopefully by then, I'll have the Weeble app for you guys to try as well. So come learn about gimbal, come learn about my workflow using a gimbal on November 9th and November 10th, again, the link to register is in the description box below. Make sure you do, cause slots are filling up. And let me know in the comments down below, which one would you go for? Would you go for the Weibo Lab or would you go for the Crane 3? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.